Hi everyone! We are going to do a titration simulation together. Unfortunately, in an online course, we can't send the equipment to do a titration for real um, <clears throat> on your own at home, but we can do a, a simulation together, which basically gives you the same um, visual idea of what a titration looks like and how it works. So here we have a great uh, online simulator and we're going to do a simple acid-base titration. So imagine, if you will, that we have a sample of acid, let's say, it, let's say it's a sample of uh, hydrochloric acid, of unknown concentration. So we're not sure what the concentration of this acid is and we want to titrate the sample to find out what is its concentration. So we would start by measuring out an exact amount, an exact volume of our sample and putting it into our flask. So here, for example, if we measured out 25 mils exactly, and we would add that to our flask. And uh, we're also going to add a little bit of a chemical indicator to our flask, which we'll talk about in a moment. The next thing we would do in our titration setup is we would attach a barrette above our flask and we would fill that barrette up with a known standard. So we're going to add a chemical or a solution that we know is going to react with our hydrochloric acid to, um, to react all of the hydrochloric acid. So in, a, in an acid-base reaction, which are very common in chemistry, we would select a base which we know will neutralize our acid and react with it to create water and a salt. So for example, we might choose um, some barium hydroxide, a strong base, and we will do a uh, strong acid, strong base reaction. <clears throat> and we're going to fill up that barrette. This is our, uh, it's like a, looks almost like a long graduated cylinder upside down. And a barrette is a piece of glassware that has graduated um, divisions on it so that you can fill it with a volume of a solution and as you slowly add that solution to your flask you can record the final volume and so the total volume that you've added off of the barrette. So we're going to go ahead and fill that up with, with our, ba our base which is our standard and that standard has a known concentration so we know the concentration of our base that we're adding and then from the titration we're, we're going to be able to record the volume that we add uh, and then from there, we can figure out how many moles of base we added. Okay, so we're almost ready to go here. Uh, the other thing we need to do then is add that chemical indicator to our sample, to our flask. We're going to choose uh, phenothalene, which is a very common acid base uh, indicator to use. In Chemistry 11, we don't really need to know much about how to choose um, a, a a good indicator for a titration, but you will learn that if you go on in Chemistry 12 and take that course. Um, but essentially, the point of the indicator is just to allow a color change to occur when we get to the equivalence point. So when all of our, our moles of HCl have been completely neutralized and reacted with our base, we're going to see a color change. And that tells us to stop the titration because we know that we're there, we've finished it. And we can then go ahead and <clears throat> we can calculate the moles of acid that were present in our flask. So we're going to go ahead and um, and uh, fill up our fill up our barrette with our standard base, and we're, our sample is ready to go. We're always stirring it the whole time through our titration. So we either generally you stir it um, using your hand, so you're holding the flask with one hand and slowly swirling it. Uh, here they've put a magnetic stir bar into the flask so that it keeps stirring it all automatically. It doesn't really matter as long as you can um, continue to stir the solution so that as you add the base it's mixing well with your sample. Okay and then this little uh, um, stopcock that you see on the graduated, or pardon me, on the barrette is um, a little valve that allows the base to flow into the flask. So this basically is the stop and go um, valve. And so we can either pour a whole bunch in at once. So we might pour a good amount like that in. Uh, and then once we get close to the end point or we think or the equivalence point and we think we're there, we would add our standard or our base um, in a drop wise very very slowly. I don't want to take too long on the simulation for those of you watching at home, so <clears throat> I've added a little bit already because I think I know approximately how much we have to add. And then we're going to add it slowly, dropwise, 
and we're looking for a color change. And what we're going to see start to happen is that this solution is going to turn pink as we get close to the equivalence point. And it will start to turn pink, and it won't, uh, it won't stay pink. The pink will fade, but once we get close, we'll notice that the pink color is staying longer, and eventually it doesn't fade at all, and that's when we know we have reached the equivalence point. I'm just going to pop a little bit more in here. Ooh. <laughs> so you can see now that that pink color is starting to stay. Okay, so right towards the end here, I'm at 19.38 mils of base added, and we have our color is not changing. So that tells me that I'm at the equivalence point. So I would then record the volume off my barrette, 19.3 mils, which you would actually read um, in, in a laboratory, you'd actually read it off the barrette and record it yourself. And then using that volume and the known concentration of your base, you could then calculate the moles of base added. And then as I mentioned before, we could cross the mole bridge to moles of sample and then concentration of sample using our volume of sample. So a very simple way to titrate and find uh, an unknown concentration of a sample.